While most of the combinations, most of the innovation I discussed so far actually refer to the first information paradigm, digital paradigm of information communication and storage. Now, as I often explained in the first sessions, the new paradigm is much more about algorithms and computation. So let's look a little bit at that. I cannot talk too much about it because we're just in the process of creating it. So I'm looking forward to what you have to propose and the innovations that you propose to come up with. And while the majority of the examples on new combinations in the digital realms that I've used under now refer to basically communication storage a lot, which as you remember from the first sessions of our specialization that um, is the, has to do with the first paradigm of digitalization uh, in the digital age. Now, the ongoing and emerging new paradigm has to do much more with algorithms and knowledge, which involves these traits here extremely heavily. The rise of artificial intelligence and the blockchain, the decentralization, the consensus algorithms, and so forth that are enabled also with decentralized uh, storage networks, thanks to the computation. So let's look a little bit in those. I cannot tell you too much about it because it's, it's just being in the process of being socially constructed. So I'm very much looking forward to what you come up with. There's certainly a lot of unexplored potential here uh, in this, in the knowledge and in the algorithmic paradigm. So let's look at some. So traditionally, if you look at our setup that comes from the first parts of the specialization, we have digitalization, we have all these digital stored information that we communicate and we bring it together. So that's good old telecommunication and storage, and we communicate that upward, for example, in an organization to inform, let's say, the management, the powers to be, the deciders, the, the ones who have the strategy to see what's going on. And uh, as we talked about in, in previous sessions, this is now increasingly being algorithmified. So while the information flows up in the first instant, and that's important, and most companies and also organizations and states and so forth, they're still struggling with this and are very early in this part of digitalization. Now, what the future is showing us and where some other companies are already going is they go towards algorithmification. So that has to do with machine learning up here, with simulations, what if scenarios, then with the programmability. And while information flows up here, uh, information flows down here. So you're basically given directions, strategic directions from here, and you intervene in analog reality. So if we go back to our framework from the ISA 95 from the International Society of Automation. We did that, I think, in the in an early session of this specialization, the second session, if I'm not mistaken. You can see in this framework how traditionally also information flows up there from the hardware level up to, to the decision level. And now the challenge consists in reaching downwards. So often in, the, in companies, when I work with, with companies on digital transformation projects, you find that a lot. So they, they work a lot on bringing different databases and telecommunication systems together, then channel them upward to the management, and then they convert it into a slide deck. Some graphs, some PowerPoints that they show to the upper management and they take decisions. And when they take a decision, what they do is they pick up the phone and call down and say somebody on, you know, on the factory floor, they say, hey, can you go and turn off the machine or turn on the machine or change that? And that, of course, the idea of algorithmification is that a lot of programmability, one of our digital traits comes in here. First of all, that we create intelligence up here with machine learning and simulations machine learning based often on empirical knowledge, simulations on theoretical what-if scenarios, and then the programmability, all three important digital traits, um, helps us to reach down here. And instead of just picking up the phone and sending somebody to use their hands to do something, we can also intervene and we can stop the conveyor belt right there from the central command station, from, from our monitors. And this is also in, in migrating to our homes already. I know if you've played with smart home applications and we all do a little bit, maybe with Siri or Alexa or hey Google and these kind of, these kind of applications. And more and more, the idea of an intelligent smart home is to use this programmability. So this is actually a software here that is used in industry. 
So this is an industry software that in, in the framework, when you use the star, you would, you would place the software directly here. So this is where the strings come together. And that's a pretty powerful modular software that allows you to bring this together. But you can think about it as a smart home. So basically the star network, the hub and spoke network is kind of like your phone interface. And then you download different apps. That's what it is to bring these things together. And then you can program different rules if then scenario. So if I say, hey, Google, hey, Siri, hey, Alexa, prepare the house for vacation, then it shuts down the garage door, it turns on the automatic irrigation, it, it closes the door, it starts to, it sets up the security system, it puts the cameras in motion, and it starts to charge the car. So that's basically, but this is a lot of if, then, if, then. If I say, hey, good morning, then read me the news, give me the weather update. So all these if then routines that I can program into a smart home that I can program even a consumer product like we use in our talking, talking devices nowadays. I can program these routines and many of these routines, routines, huh, algorithms, going back to our second session, algorithms in the first course, we talked about algorithmification and what algorithms are. So they are basically recipes. And we have to program many, many, many different recipes, if then clauses uh, in a company, for example. Imagine all the different things that could happen. But that is the challenge of also implementing a downlink from the decision down, let's say, to the factory floor, for example. And in the same way of the algorithmic paradigm, uh, let's talk about the blockchain and consensus algorithm. We talked about the blockchain a lot already, so I'm not going to bore you with that. But following with our, with our framework from the blockchain, here's an example that I really found fascinating. And I had to interview the CEO of this company. It's called Quantum RE, Matthew Sullivan. I interviewed him. The idea of what they do, the, this, the blockchain, remember, we conceptualize it as a property system. And what I store here is basically the property of real estate, of houses. So you could sell a house is, is in California, well, probably upward to a million dollars worth uh, in some parts here in Northern California. And now you sell $7 of your house value and you use the blockchain in order to assign ownership of such a small percentage of the future value of a house. Check out this interview, which I found really fascinating as a possible digital innovation. And think about all the other things you could do with something similar. Okay, wrapping up today. So these were some just some examples. I walked you through the digital trades, reaching to digital innovations. And we walked through about, you know, a dozen, I would say, different, different combinations of these 21 factors. But remember, there are many, many more uh, that you can combine. And I'm very much looking forward to the combinations you come up with. So have fun innovating in the digital realm.